Good morning guys, um, welcome to the channel, thanks so much for watching. Um, today we're out here back in Essex, so we're back at the same property that we were doing the smart lighting for the outside, but today we've got a slightly different video. And what we wanted to do out of today's video was basically show um, how easy it is to retrofit smart technology into a home. It's a question that we get all the time is, can I have smart lighting? Um, because I don't want to rewire my house, I don't want to start changing things. What we want to show you today is how easy it is to actually, as an electrician, install this technology and start to offer that to your customers. Um, so what we want to show you is to check whether or not the system's compatible um, and basically the process that we take to do it. Um, and it's incredibly simple. We're only doing lighting today, but the principles of, of how to do it, how to program it, is all the same. So we'll show you all of the, the steps that we take. So we'll start with the lighting and uh, we'll show you what it is that we do. So we've got Ruben with us again today. He's just doing some work experience. Um, he's still in school, but he's got some time off. So he's kindly come and offered a hand, but he's looking for an apprenticeship when, uh, when he finishes his, all his GCSEs. So that'd be good. Um, so basically, we've got this foyer area that we're working on. So there's lots of existing downlighters, as you can see. So they want to make these smart. So they want to replace them for the JCC lights, which we'll, sh we'll show you shortly, and um, make them compatible with Lutron. So what we have are these RA2 inline dimmers. So these are an incredibly simple bit of kit, and they're so, they're so easy to install and they're so clever. This is not a Lutron sponsored video, it's just technology that I genuinely believe is really good stuff. All you're doing is feeding the dimmer, and then you've got your load and it's as simple as that. So you've got your live terminal, which is obviously the feed from wherever it is that it's coming from, consuming it, another looped rows, whatever. And then your load terminal out there, which is what's dimmed. So what we want to do is we want to find for every leg of every circuit, we need its own dimmer. So in this situation, we have a light switch here. Obviously it's safely isolated currently, but each one of these switches, we have a feed from the consumer unit to the switch, and then each one of these switches will power a different branch. So to make these still work individually, each one of these switches will need um, one of these inline dimmers. So what we'll do is we have to find the first point from each one of these switches. So in this case, we found it here. And from the feed in from the switch, we want to feed into the Lutron controller. The feed out from the Lutron controller into our new light fitting. This is the old light fitting and then out of that through to the lights, right up to the end of line. And that means everything downstream of this is powered by this controller. And then what we do inside the switch, because we don't want this switch here anymore, we want to be using the Pico remotes, which we'll show you shortly, is we'll link that out so that it's got a permanent feed. Um, and that it's, it's literally as simple as that. So what we'll do is we'll talk you through the process as we do it, because I'm kind of explaining it to Ruben and showing him how all this smart lighting stuff works. So we'll get them on. We get all the new lights up and we'll show you the process of programming them, which is also stupidly easy. So again, thanks for watching. Any questions, just stick them in the comments below and we'll try and answer them for you. So today we're using the JCC V50s. And again, one of my favorite products um, to use on lighting, just because they're stupidly cheap for the amount of quality that they contain. Um, they come with both color temperatures. They're completely fire rated, um, acoustic rated, so I'll show you what's in the box. So you have the actual driver itself, which is dimmable, it's Lutron compatible. It's got these fantastic push fit terminals, which makes it really, really easy and quick to wire. It's got the built-in cable grip, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And the actual fitting itself is just very smart and so slim, so that if you've not got much depth on your ceiling or something, or say it's lava and plaster and it's just not an ideal situation to put a down light, and you can install these. And this is the coolest bit, right? So obviously the bezels are interchangeable, but this is the coolest bit. Sometimes clients don't know whether they want warm white or cool white, or you might install it, and they decide actually, no, this isn't the right color temperature for my room. You've got a switch where you can literally flick between warm white and cool white, as simple as that. So even after install, if the customer changes their mind, super easy peasy to, to swap it. So easy, in fact, that our work experience friend is going to do most of these himself, whilst I go and deal with some other bits outside. Um, so, yeah, fantastic product. We've got the slightly different ones here. These are the tilters. 
um, these ones will tilt right out basically just because that's what we wanted along these walls they needed to tilt down towards the paintings um, but I thought I'd just demonstrate the V50 just because they're the most common ones that we tend to use another good thing about them is the bezels are quite wide you've got a fair bit of depth there so if you've got say you slightly mess up the hole where it just chips a bit of paint or something you've got a little bit more forgiveness there rather than just having a super slim bezel so yeah great product I hope you're having fun down there um, I thought I'd show you a little tip for taking out downlighters um, especially when they've been painted in slightly like they have here because ruining the ceiling is never good no one wants to to have the sparky round then have to go around the decorators just because you've installed some downlighters. So what I'll do is I'll get my Stanley blade, I'll just really carefully cut around it. Fortunately for me, I don't need a ladder for this, for this height. <laughs> and then what I'll do, because there's two, there's two problems here with this downlighter. You've got the problem of the sparky mouse trap, I call it, where boom, the springs are on your fingers and you're in agony for the rest of the day. Um, and also not damaging the plasterboard. So what I do is I twist them, I drop them, I bop them, no, and I actually will support the plasterboard with my fingers, like so, and pull it out with my thumbs. And then I look where the springs are, so they're there. And I just support that plasterboard. There we go. And then I'll hold on to the springs so they don't ping me and so that they don't ping the plasterboard. And I'll just carefully take that out. I mean, I can see single insulated cable, which we're going to change, um, but no damage. And that was painted in. So ideal. It's a good little, good little way of doing it. Just taking it down, getting your thumbs in there, and popping it off. Hope that was helpful. So obviously I've shown you in there the tip of how I take them down so not to damage them, but sometimes even when you're really, really careful, you get this. And what's happened here is where obviously a downlight has been taken down in the past. They've chipped out the plasterboard because there's nothing behind that. Um, so when I've taken the light down, even being really careful, the little bit of filler or whatever was there has just popped out. So I'll show you how it is that I repair that when... I need to just pinch this thing, so annoying. <laughs> I need to show you how it is that I repair that. Um, so I've got some special filler that I use, which is awesome stuff. And although it's probably going to do exactly the same thing when the next Sparky takes it down, hopefully he's got filler as well, and hopefully he's watched this video and has that tip. I want to show you this product. It's from America, I believe, but we buy it in, I think, BW, TLC, stock it. Absolutely awesome. It's called One Time. And the, t the consistency, I don't know how I could really describe it. It's almost like marshmallow fluff. Um, but it's the perfect consistency to get like a really nice smooth fill um, on things and I mean we're not decorators but you, you want to make a bit of an effort don't you, you don't want to leave it messy um, and although like, I can plaster I don't really think it's always necessary to go and do a full on plaster so what I do is I just put a tiny little bit loaded onto my filling knife I just hook underneath and just smush that in there I'll just get a little bit more all the decorators watching right now are dying, cringing. My terrible techniques, probably. Just gonna lift that out of sight, but it's like I say, I'm no, I'm no pro decorator, but I don't like leaving someone's house worse than how we found it. There we go. There we go. So just a touch, touch better. Um, and, you know, you're leaving the property how you'd want it to be if it was your own. You've got to treat it with respect, basically. And if you make damage where it's possible to, to try and make good, even if it's not technically your fault. Um, when that dries, that should be fairly, fairly smooth already. I mean, um, usually when you use filler, like, it'd be good to have a wet knife and a dry knife to kind of polish it up a little bit. But with this, I find it just dries so smooth, so easily, just with a tiny little bit of sanding. Um, so hopefully that'll dry okay. And it just doesn't shrink either. Like a lot of fillers, I find you, you do, they shrink, and then you do, and then they shrink. 
this just dries awesome. I think up to about, I reckon at least, I don't, it doesn't say on here, but I reckon at least 10, 15 mil before you start getting shrinking. So great little product just to do little minor patches and repairs. We'll leave the um, link for that in the description below. So this is the point here. This is the first point from the switch on this circuit. So we're gonna find which one's live and whichever one's live, that's the one that will be going to feed the Lutron controller, basically. I've got my old Barco ones back, the old Faithfuls. So you know, Klein, if you're watching this and you wanna send me another pair, you're welcome to. I won't, I won't say no. So grab this on the out. Just push down, push them all the way in, make sure they're nice and tight, each individual conductor, and happy days, we're good to go. So you can just tell the quality of these products, these lights. What I like is you can tell that um, they're made, well, they're made by electricians for electricians, and you can, you can easily see how someone who wires a lot of downlights has designed it because it's just so quick. Like say it takes five, 10 minutes to, to second fix a normal downlighter, say five minutes realistically. With this, I can probably do a downlighter in maybe a minute. It's just stupidly quick. Especially if you have your CK stripping tool or Nipex stripping tool, you just click, click, earth sleeve in, plugged in, done. Um, so that's all good. On the outgoing side, now we need to wire feed in so I'll strip that back a touch and line that up it's kind of hard to do so far above my head I really ought to start packing two ladders <laughs> two set of steps on the van I like a nice tidy empty van though it's the trouble so line that up just slide that into place like so And again, with the Lutron stuff, I want to make sure the single insulated cable's inside the cord grip, which is across there. Um, make sure there's no copper showing, nice and neat as possible in pretty tight space. Just to win an earth. And then, now that's all lined up nicely. I'll just bend that around, ready to drop the earth into place. I quite like the mask because my concentration face isn't the nicest, so. So, um, there we go. That's all wired up. So, I will grab the cord grip, which I stashed in here. The only trouble is not being able to have a mouth to I am to stuff. It just disappears. Look at that. That's creepy, isn't it? There's something out of nightmare. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to wire that up. There we go. I'll take the tiny little black screw out of here. And we cover it up. So it's important that you don't hide it above the ceiling just yet because uh, there's still one more step for when you're pairing it. So you will have to take the downlighter and get down again if you just uh, put it above the ceiling now. So what we, what we have to do is once we power it up, we have to push the power button. Once you've pushed that, it then puts it onto the system for the hub, the Lutron hub to start looking for it. Okay, so um, you'll be able to see, hopefully on the screen, the app and what exactly it is that I'm doing. So what I want to do is I want to access an existing system. I'm in the pro installer mode. So I want local access. So I'm connected to the customer's Wi-Fi. I'm using the RA2 select. So I push next. It's going to look for the Lutron system. So this is the Lutron hub. So this is the thing that basically connects um, the Lutron to the internet and to your phone, um, etc. So it, it links all the devices up and you can link repeaters to this, whatever product it is that you like. So what it will ask you to do is tap the button on the back of your main repeater. So I'm just going to tap that button and then I want to 
use my information um, and what that does is it will allow me to have backdoor access to the system and it will also leave my details on the system as the last Lutron installer to work on it. So I'm going to leave that just in there inside their little patch panel um, and then what we'll do, we'll come out and I'll show you exactly how we pair them up and find a new device. Right, so we've got all the we've got all the feeds fed through. So it's just temporarily waygoed basically. All of these cables are not needed anymore and so are dead. So I've just got a waygo temporarily linking them so I know exactly what it is. So what I want to do is I want to find this thing here on the app. So I'm going to do add device. 240 volt inline dimmer, find dimmer switch. And because this one's not been paired to any hub, it should pop up on here. So I'll flash it. And what it will do, just to make sure it's definitely the right one, it will flash all of these lights. And so, yep, I can confirm that is correct. So I will add to the system and I'll choose something that does it. So I'm going to say foyer entry, front foyer, next, ceiling lights. And I'll just say I'm done adding devices. So what we're going to do next is see what the situation is with the switching um, and link them out so that they're on permanently. Then we'll fit a blank plate onto here. Oosh, bit of a mess. Oh, I see what they've done. So they had the um, Philips Hue lights outside and they had a wireless sensor for them. So someone's actually already linked one of these out with a uh, connector block. So we're pretty much just doing exactly the same thing again. Just gonna link them out. We have got the uh, two-way for the upstairs lights and then the downstairs lights with the two-way going off to it. So all of these circuits are dead. Oh man, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Oh, I just pulled that right off. Um, okay, we'll see if we can pretty this up a little bit, make it look a little bit more artisan. So I have been separating this out, trying to tidy up a little bit. So I've, I've reconnected the earths because I didn't like that baggy, horrible earth sleeping that was used or how it was crammed in. So I've just done that, got them out of the way. I've reconnected the neutrals into a way go in the back um, just because I've put a snapshot one because I'm not sure exactly what it is that's doing what yet, so I might have to take them back out again, so I've put them in a snappy one. I'm pretty sure that's a two-way. I think that is a two-way. I think that that is a two-way as well. Yes, yeah, so I think you've got feed in, feed out, outside lights, permanent for outside lights, and then hallway lights, upstairs hallway lights, something like that. So I'm going to put all of these together I'm not going to connect these. I'm going to put them into a connection, um, connector blocks or Wagos and just neatly fold them into the switch because we're putting, um, it's not a blank plate. For now, I'm putting a blank plate, but we've ordered like a triple Pico remote holder. The Pico remotes are the Lutron remotes that you use to switch and control all of these. Um, so I'm putting like a triple Pico remote holder there, but it doesn't need any cables. The Pico remotes have batteries inside of them. So I just, but I still want it to look neat. We'll get it all in dress it back, put the blank plate on, and then when the Pico remote holder comes, we can just swap that over. So I'm going to take the opportunity to show you how easy it is to change the colour temperature. Watch. Warm white, cool white. On these ones, the switch is on the driver. And on the app itself, you can create different scenes, which I've created some for them already. You can create different schedules. And if you go onto the different devices, you can assign them and change them. So what I will do here is just dim them down just to show you how that works. Dim them all the way off. I can set them to whatever percent I want of brightness. I can turn them off, turn them on, completely control it from my phone basically. Um, and then when you go into one of the Pico remotes, you can edit that device. And basically you can set whichever rooms and devices within that room that it is that you want to turn on. So for example, for the exterior lights, I've set the Pico remote to turn on the front door rear guard and wall lights one and rear guard and wall lights two because that's what the customer wanted it to be. So super, super easy to figure out um, on there. OK, 
Okay, so why do I start every bit of video with okay, so, well, okay, so what I've done is I've disconnected these two-way switches at the other end and I've stuck a little label on it. Um, so this was fed from the other end, so this is dead now. So I've chopped all the insulation back, sorry, um, chopped all the copper off, taped it up and just pushed it out of the way because I never want to chop a cable out of a switch because the thing is you never know when someone might need it or find it useful. So I'm not going to chop it out. I'm just going to leave it in there. These are all the ones that I need. Now I just need to get a blank plate for that. That will all be hidden away. Um, and we can put the Pico switch mounts onto that. So I'm just gonna work my way through all the different switches doing that. So um, we've got in this room here, they want the Lutron um, sensors, occupancy sensors. So I've got one here. Um, that's really easy to wire up. Um, they, well, there's no wires on them. They link wirelessly to the um, Lutron controllers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit one of these up here because it just seems to make sense because we've already got the uh, loop in and the loop out. So I'll wire that in there and put that above the ceiling and then swap all of these out for um, our, our JCC V50s. So we'll crack on with that now. So I'm just pairing the motion sensor to this device here. So I've done exactly the same thing. I've just found it, auto test off, see test on, yeah. So I've just found it inside the app as under motion sensor and paired it and assigned it to this room. So now I can edit the device and control exactly what it is that I want it to do. So that's pretty easy. I've, I've wired this up. So I've got my loop in and my loop out, which was going to the PIR um, through this Wago box here. Then I've gone out of the Wago box through the Lutron dimmer. And the Lutron dimmer, I've already programmed it. Um, so just stick that above the ceiling. I'm just trying to think of a sensible way to mount it to the ceiling because the other one had a hole there. This one's a surface mount one, so I want to mount it without making any damage. Um, and I've kind of come up with this idea with this scrap lid, thinking I might be able to, like, because I just want something really gentle that I can kind of pop out the ceiling. Um, so I was thinking of either putting a little bit of wood across and screwing to that, but actually, just, Bit of wasted plastic here. Might be able to make use that. covered and all they have to do I screwed a bit of plastic lid which was just in the recycling to it and I've just made like two little wings so if I want to I'll just pull it and then the wings will just pop through the hole and it's firm enough to hold it securely in place but it's soft enough that if I want to pull it out it'll pull it out without wrecking the plasterboard or screwing any more screws or holes so that thing is completely covered now holes are completely covered I guess maybe I am a Womble, making use of wasted materials. Thank you for calling me a Womble, whoever that was. Um, yeah, cool, we're all good, on to the next one. Okay, so we're finished now. This is our last light, so this is our last circuit. So I've got basically the permanent feed coming in um, to hear from the switch, um, out into the JCC downlighter um, driver, out into the, so, sorry, I've got the permanent feed coming in here to the Lutron controller, out into the downlighter, out of the downlighter, into the Wago box, into all the other ones. Um, and yeah, I'm, just, I'm very impressed with these lights. You know, like I say, you can change, on these ones, they're slightly different. These are the tilt ones. So um, this is what we're installing up here rather than the normal ones. So these ones basically will, will tilt and adjust. And the same, again, you can change the color 
So the customer here has gone for call white. So they're all programmed up. So I will show you now how they look. So now, moment of truth. Pico remote is all paired up. There we go. That will come on. Lovely. And I can control that. I can dim that from there or from my phone or from any of the other units. So in this room here, slightly different. We've got an occupancy sensor. So it's actually set to come on when it's dark. But I'll just push the test button so you can, you can, uh, well actually I think it's that one you need to push. There you go. So you can see them come on. So this links up wirelessly as well, so it programs onto the Lutron system. So it can be overridden by one of the Pico remotes or by the phone. But in this room here, he just wanted to, so when he walks through at night, it will turn these on. And the cool thing is, because they're wireless, I can put that occupancy sensor here and get it to do any number of things. I could have it that when I walk in through the, the night, it might be, let's say for example, I wanted a light switch. So I could have a light switch there to have these come on at 100%. But then if I'm coming down at night to go to the toilet, I might just want the lights dim, so that occupancy sensor will set all of the lights at say 30%. So then I can walk through, go toilet, toilet lights on at 30%, when I walk out again, nice and dim. Um, so it's pretty cool how you can play around with it. Basically with the Lutron, if you can imagine it, you can probably probably do it when it comes to the lighting and the sound, light, um, shades, pretty much anything. So I hope that answers a few questions about it, um, so you can see how easy it is to install, program, um, and finish up. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the description below. But like I said, I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching and take care and stay safe.